hello internet today we are going to be having our first uh business model canvas implementation and it's going to be very interesting because i'll be showing you on uh, our guest mr rotimi itayo will be here also to throw more light on how you can remodel your business uh plan and how you can remodel your business uh uh, uh canvas so we are looking at uh businesses in nigeria scaling through this uh lockdown and scaling through beyond lockdown and it's very important that every business every uh business that is able to operate in this country they are very profitable even if they are not uh working from their main uh, venue over your main avenue so it's important that every business does not fail at this point and if you have a business model this is the time to revamp your business model so we are calling it the virt uh, virtual take uh, takeover yes the virtual takeover which involves having a hybrid business model where you run on the cloud that is the internet and you also run in the on the land or your physical your physical location so most businesses we have today have failed or are, are shut down even the way they are locked down so that is appalling that is appalling it means that family or that uh, business owner will not make profit for the next two three or six months and i uh, based on statistics or based on uh, forecast it shows that this year is already locked down no business it's difficult for business to pick up immediately except those businesses that are already thriving uh in the process of lockdown which is mostly the telecom and the tech companies so these are businesses that are already thriving and not even all tech companies it's just still some companies that are still trying to uh, uh, focus on surviving now you the staffs are being uh, laid out or laid off and maybe pay cut and all that so this is not supposed to be and some other businesses are making uh, uh 500 percent interest or profit from this lockdown so what is happening what is really happening in this at this point in time where some businesses are making 500 uh, percent interest and some other business are like minus zero they are already bankrupt and they are already uh in loan debt so that is appalling schools to schools are supposed to even be thriving at this point in time but schools have been trained not to uh train without uh the the tech advantage schools have been trained without uh harnessing technology in learning so now they are struggling to even uh, uh, uh gain the confidence of their of their parents or their customers so there, there's confusion somewhere and it's because we have not actually made our business model thrive over time or make our business model very lucrative to this point in time using the uh the tech advantage and the uh, world of technology tools that it has to offer inside our businesses so today we'll be looking at the business model uh, model canvas and the mechanics of your business model so we'll look at what we we'll, we'll also take a case study of other businesses around the world that are thriving and how they thrive and how they they they, they gain the advantage even over their competitors and yet they still remain lucrative till this point yes so your business is not supposed to die your business is not supposed to go down the drain uh if you know how to revamp your model and i, I bet you that we have business plan but we don't have a model to that plan that is another uh, that's a very very crucial uh, thing we need to talk about most people have business plan but they don't even have a model to that plan so we're looking at the business model canvas and uh, at the end of the the webinar this webinar i believe you will need help to revamp your uh, your business plan or your business model and make it much more uh invincible or lucrative yes when i say invisible i didn't mean i don't mean it has to be out of uh, out of market i'm just trying to use the term that has to do with 
it is invisible to uh shortcomings to to lockdown is invisible to every uh catastrophe that comes against it so that is an invisible company or invincible business because it's going to sail above every catastrophe and that is what i want for nigerian business owners and what i want for nigerian entrepreneurs so thank you for joining us if you are online please do wave oh edu crest early years thank you for watching pious Angpa, thank you for walking Hida Momo, thank you for watching Olubukola uh, Fakola, thank you for watching Gozi Sophia, thank you for watching. So I'll bring our guest online, Mr. Rotimi Itayo. He is a consultant and a strategist. So we're going to be taking this business model plan, remodeling for Nigerian businesses step by step and help every business uh, that is going through this crisis sail and become uh, afloat again. So, Mr. Rotimi. Hello, Jude. How are you? Good to I'm see you good. Today. I'm good, Mr. Rotimi. Thank you for joining this webinar. We are taking Nigerian businesses to the next level. Yes, we are helping them remodel their businesses and keep afloat. Because any yeah. business that suffer at this point in time, it's a it's a chain reaction. Other businesses are going to also suffer. So, all businesses rely on each other. And it's important Absolutely. that each business uh, float or keep afloat at this point in time. So what's your take on Mr. Rotimi on business remodeling generally, quickly? Well, um, thank you once again for this opportunity. Um, when you talk about business remodeling, uh, we need to look at the two words that make up remodeling. The first thing is modeling. Modeling talks about um, the shape or the perception or the frame something should be. So yes. when we look at the business model, the reason we use the word remodeling is because businesses are meant to evolve. Mm. Every business under the sun must have something called evolution. It's the cycle at which the business exists yes. to sustain itself. And whether there is a COVID-19, there is a pandemic, there is a crunch, or there is a shake as an uproar, every business goes through an evolution and the reasons why businesses go through evolution is for different reasons sometimes um, when you've come of age you go through a remodeling you will need a remodeling you go through an evolution sometimes when you're approaching growth you will need mm. to do what to remodel because the frame of a business at a starting stage it's not necessarily the frame of the same piece of this, the frame that will sustain the business beyond the starting frame, um, phase. So okay. basically, when we say business remodeling, it's just saying that it's a reality where business processes are reviewed for optimality. Okay. Mm, okay. So great, great. Thank you for that definition, Mr. Rotimi. Thank you for that definition. Every business re needs remodeling at this point in time. Because it's obvious that the weaknesses of every business is uh, is laid open now. So you can't tell me your business is strong and you are still locked down. You are not making money. You can't tell me your business model was the best. And during lockdown, you cannot make money or you cannot sell or you cannot uh, do things that your business needs to be doing. So that is that shows a core weakness in your business model. And it shows a core weakness in your business plan because you never planned for this uh at this point in time so i'll be taking uh we'll be going through the business model canvas it's a it's a it's a roadmap or a template that every business model rely on it's a building block for every business and uh mr rotimi and i will be looking at each segment of that and then we'll go to the business model mechanics now uh we cannot treat this topic in one day we cannot treat it uh, overnight uh, we cannot treat it even in a week it has to take time for you to uh, uh, implement so that's why we are bringing it to your to the uh, to every other person who needs to remodel their business so that at the end of this uh, webinar you know who to contact you know how your business should start running from this point in time i'll give a shout out to those online uh, uh, Christian, uh, Christiana, thank you for joining. Gozi, Sofia Naji, thank you for joining. 
Ezin Ejuan, thank you for joining. Uh, Lugumi, thank you for joining. Ololade Mac Johnson, thank you for joining. Uh, so, uh, welcome. And uh, one next, next uh, thing I would like to chip in is every business now should have an e-commerce uh, e commerce aspect of that business. It's obvious that you can't buy and sell in your small shop or in your big company alone. You need to have an e-commerce platform or an e-commerce thing. I don't know what your business is, but you need to be selling something. That is the most important thing. You need to be selling something. Whether you're selling your services or whether you're selling your goods, you need to be selling something and it needs to be scalable online. That is one important thing. Even schools, they need to be selling something. So that's the one important thing uh, we're going to be talking about at this uh, webinar. So I'll, I'll share my screen and go use my presentation. Okay. So this is the business uh, model canvas. It's made up of nine segments. You have the key partners to your business, the key activities, the key resources, the value proposition, the customer relationship, the channels to which your uh, business flow, uh, the customer segments, the cost structure, and the revenue stream. So these are what we're going to be looking at, the nine basic uh, building blocks of any business. Some of them you have control over, some of them you don't have control over, but having them in sight shows that you are, you are, you are a forward-thinking business owner, you're a forward-thinking entrepreneur. So we'll begin we we'll begin with the first one the customer segment for whom are we are you creating your business for so you already know your customers and uh you already know where your customers are based and who you are targeting uh in your customer so is your customer based uh is your is our customer based in market a mass market or niche market or segment or that's uh, diversified or multi-sided platform so these are what we're looking at so your customer segment as at this point you already know it so mr rotim what do you have to say about that customer segment and how can it be scalable okay so when you talk about customer segmentation yes. or you say customer segment basically um, this is where intelligence meets pursuit. Um, mm. A lot of times you have an idea of an idea and you an call idea it your business. Of an idea. Okay. Uh, but the truth, yes, yes. So whenever you hear someone say, I have an idea, you don't have an idea. It's actually an idea of an idea. The mm. idea is complete when you now have what you call a total design tied to specific. So that's where customer segmentation comes in. Segmenting the customer or segmenting the market helps you know exactly what you are delivering and also how it is tied to the needs of that customer. Do you understand? Okay. Yes. So a lot, of, a lot of times, business curves lengthens or shortens by ability to qualify and segment your market. A lot of mm. people go through unnecessary no's, unnecessary commercial rejections, unnecessary mm. resistance in market, unnecessary mm. waste of investment, unnecessary mm. headaches as entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship mm. and business world is full of challenges, but yes. you should be able to... Okay. Okay. Okay, it seems Mr. Roti is a bit uh is is actually on the road, so uh please do bear with us. So he is actually talked about we're talking about customer segment. You already know your customer segment and you know what uh target market you are in and who you are who your who your market is for. Now your market cannot be for everybody. Like my favorite car, uh, the Rolls Royce, 
yes, I love the Rolls Royce car. Not because uh, it is expensive, but because the it's it has a special quality. So I think Mr. Rotim is back. Okay, okay, it's not back. So uh like i was saying the rolls royce i love the rolls royce car not because of the uh, the price because i'm not interested in the price but the quality the uh, the, the the work put into a rolls royce car uh, it takes six months to create a rolls royce car it takes just 13 hours to create a toyota so you can see the difference in work and uh, uh rolls royce is not for everybody and it's not for even people who believe an expensive car is just for people who have a certain kind of taste and that is their customer segment so you as a business owner you need to have your customer segment sorted out yes it needs to be sorted out as fast as possible at this point in time you already if you're a business owner you should know who you who your audience is who you're targeting and who you're marketing to you can market to everybody that's a mistake most business owners do they try to market to everybody they want everybody to be there no it's not possible you can't market to everybody if you market to everybody you end up losing at the end because uh you will not be able to decide who your real loyal customers are so you can't market to everybody know your customer segment and know your loyal customers uh we'll take we'll, we'll, we'll continue why mr rotimi before he comes back okay okay then the next thing is your value proposition that's the, the next thing the value pro uh, proposition <clears throat> proposition so what value do we deliver to your customer which one of your value your value is not your goods like uh you should know your value proposition is not your goods it's not your goods or it's not what you are selling or what you are what you're offering as services your value proposition is not that it's actually what makes your your services or whatever you sell different or unique from every other uh, 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 competition or rival of the same brand or the same uh, the same market so your va value proposition is different from what you're selling it's actually what makes your your goods unique or what makes your your brand unique that is what you should uh, take note of so what makes your brand you are selling you 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 have a school and you have neighbors who have a school and all that so what makes your school different from each other that you you have to be able to decide that and know your value proposition and that is what you sell on that is very important that is what you sell on i'll confirm if mr rotimi is back so that we we'll get on okay he's back okay mr rotimi welcome back thank you very much sorry about the yes so we are talking we're talking about value proposition please could you throw more light on that okay so first thing first when you say value proposition uh i i normally hear people say value proposition is your product mm. uh value proposition people sometimes even go for that say that value proposition is your is your service but it's not altogether accurate when we say value proposition right it just speaks about two broad things it speaks about number one the need that you're trying to meet or the problems that you're trying to solve oh. that's what value proposition is okay. so it's like saying what's what what are you bringing to the table as a business so oh. as a business i'm trying to solve some problems probably trying to ease the pain of the customer okay. or i'm trying to meet the needs of the customer it is okay. in the process of doing that that products and services emerge. Do you mm. understand? Okay. So your product is not necessarily your value proposition. Okay. However, value proposition is so the, just like the word is saying value. value. Um, you are not you're not just doing business for yourself or for your sake. Do you understand? Okay. Okay. You're doing business um, with people and for people. And so if we if we remember where that phrase comes out, where you hear the word customer is king, that phrase is as a result of certain realities. Because whatever you are doing is tied to the value. And it's the customer that determines what value is truly. truly you know, okay. so that's why, yes, that's why most times you don't do what you like 
and try to force it down the throat of a customer. Well, mm. Whereas you look at what the customer needs or what the customer has a problem with, and okay. then you do now decide to serve them, probably okay. in a particular way or the other. Okay, Mr. Rotimi, I have two pen in my hands now, right? Yeah. And there are for two uh, entrepreneurs. They want to be selling pen. So how do they differentiate their value proposition for the same products they are trying to reach or sell? Okay, so um, you have two pens. So yes, remember one for one entrepreneur and another yes. one for the other entrepreneur. So how do they? So uh, number one, um, the first battle is the quest for identity, and your okay. identity is tied to what I shared earlier. So mm -hmm. I would want to say that each each pen. Preneur, uh, each penpreneur has to be able to say that this is the identity that my pen has. So my okay. pen is, yes, a writing material, common denominator to both. Yes. But if you are trying to write on certificates or you are trying to sign executive document, mm. the quality of ink, the feel, the the craftsmanship on the body of the pen mm. would become what delivers value or what solves the problem. So if I'm mm. selling pen to C-suit officers, that's executive officers, yes. COOs, CEOs, CFOs, and the likes, okay. it means that they will want to sign something that is not like the regular. And that's oh. where you begin to see pen that if I was going to have a unique signature, I also want it to come with a unique in, with a unique yeah, unique ink. Ink. You okay. understand? Okay. So, okay. and it is that value. When I notice that this pen is of value to me, I will have the pen I use for signing certificates, or I mm. have the pen I use for signing office correspondence, and I have okay. the regular pen I use for memos and writings or normal notes. So, wow. each, each entrepreneur will now understand Okay. Okay. The business of pen or penpreneurship okay. is not about oh you sell pen I sell pen, which is either meeting the need or clearly solving a problem. Problem. If it's not clearly meeting a need, need. you will find out that a lot of times you'll be at the mercy of the food chain in the value chain value of the business. Chain. So you always be trying to scamper for market. market Whereas, yeah. because you were not able to articulate, you would have gotten the best of what you should have gotten. So it's not the pen that is the value proposition, right? That's what you are saying. You said what? It is not the pen that is the value proposition. No. Yeah. It's the value behind the sales, sales oh. of pen. pen. Okay. So okay. My 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 value is saying that oh this pen is something you can use for those who have dull sight. That's the mm -hmm. value. Value. My Good. pen is used for special occasion. That's the value. It's okay. meeting a need or it's solving a problem. Problem. You understand? So I need someone to write in. You know when we say calligraphy. So yeah, someone yes, is yes, going yes. to calligraph. He's not going to use a normal ballpoint pen. Okay. Yes, yes, He's going yes. to need something that can help bring selective of his pen. And that's why the thing about business canvas model is this. Mm. That you are able to see that there is a link between all the variables. Variables, Because yes, if I yes. have what you call value proposition, yes. then automatically it will lead me to market segmentation. Hmm, okay, okay. Because not everybody is designed to be your customer. Yes. And you are yes. not designed to be everybody's client. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So service providers must recognize and avoid the greed and the attempt to be all in all oh. to everyone. The hmm. moment your business dwells on a generalistic terrain, okay. any form of trend, any form of industry change, you are the one that will get best affected. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I believe that. Thank you so much for the uh, light you have thrown into value proposition, Mr. Rotimi. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much. So we'll go to the next uh, thing is channels through which customer segments want to be reached. So you have your customers. How do you reach your customers? Uh, your customers are in the wild or they're in a specific uh, geographical location or specific uh, social status. How do you reach your customers? So this is very important. Now we are in the social media age and every customer can be reached at least 50% of your customer can be reached online. That is one good thing about it. 50% of your customers can be reached online. And that online is a very is a good channel to reach as much customers that can afford and patronize your products and patronize your business. So Mr. What do you talk about? What what do you think about uh, customer channels? So when we say customer channels, I would like us to break it down so that the average person understands. Okay. So okay. if you're familiar with your TV or your cable stations, okay. you realize that having access to a decoder doesn't necessarily mean you're on a particular channel. Yes. So there's a TV station that has a particular channel, channel 5, channel 10, channel mm. 20. So it means that there's a need for market intelligence where for me to reach my customer is not enough to go online. Being mm -hmm. online is just speaking about a medium to reach my customer. customer. However, I need to find the channel. At the point of channel is a point of connect. Market is defined as a special arrangement that brings together the buyer and the seller. So every business provider, every business owner, every business leader must seek special arrangements that can bring him or her with or in contact with the buyer. Okay. That special arrangement is what creates your channel. That's why you say channel of communication. communication. Some okay. people will be on internet, but the channel to reach them will be through a program, a webinar. Some other people, you will never reach them to a webinar. It webinar. might be through a video. It might be through a music um, um, channel. It can, be, it can be through different things. Yeah. So customers exist online, just as customers exist offline. But okay. we need to focus on the right channel. If you don't use the right channel, it's as good as we. in the dark and expecting people to see okay winking in the dark <laughs> i like that phrase winking in the dark <laughs> i like that phrase okay roda odigo ah my sister Thank you for joining this webinar. Thank you for joining this webinar, Roger Digbo. Uh, uh, yes, yes, service, uh, service providers must have voice solving everybody's problem. You are not there for everybody. Even in church, uh, the pastor is not everybody's pastor. The same thing, the pastor should not expect everybody should be their member. So uh, you should know, even teachers, even teachers, you have some students that absorb everything you teach and you still have some students that will struggle with what you teach. So it plays across board. Uh, yes, everybody's oh, okay. Roda, you were saying everybody uses drinking drinks water, some drinks pure water, yes, stable water, premium water, and even green water, conscious water. What market problem or segmentation am I solving? Yes, that is the truth. That is the uh, that's the core simplicity of my uh, customer segmentation or your market segmentation. So very important, very important. Okay, Mr. Rotimi just left. Okay, I'll I'll bring him back. Okay, uh, customer relationship. What type of relationship does each of our customer segment expect us to establish? Now, in your business, some customer wants very uh, intimate relationship with them in terms of uh, the way you relate with them. They want you to be concerned with their well-being. So that it can that can be very tricky. That can be very tricky. It happens in school. You have some parents that 
want you to call them every now and then to confirm how they are doing so you should understand that kind of uh, customer and you have some customer that you just want you to be on your parts they just they just come uh, put their words in their your school and that's it they don't care much about you calling them or trying to look out for them but some customers are very sensitive so you have to understand your customer relationship which ones have we established how are they integrated into the rest of our business model very very important let me confirm if mr rotim is back okay okay he's not back okay he's not back i'll once he's back i'll confirm with you so these are very these are very important uh, uh, relationships that you have to build with your customer your customer is not just your customer sometimes some customer wants something closer to like a brother or family that's why you see some business they are like a family business where you see the customers uh, 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 customers actually having very close uh, relationship with the business owners not because they they don't want to pay for the goods or they are looking for this kind but that is how they want to relate with the business and you have to take that into recognition it seems mr rotimi is back let me confirm okay you're back mr rotimi so we are looking yeah. at customer relationship and i've been laying some foundation that customers some customers want deeper relationship for them to even patronize you compared to some that just they are okay with just your goods and they are gone so what do you say about that mr rotimi well, it's a relational world. No, no business must be considered as just a thing. Every okay. business is an entity, and you must see businesses as individuals, willing and waiting to interact. Mm. Those who are able to interact well with their customers tend to have a better service experience. We need to oh. understand that every business must seek to connect with the heart of their customers. Mm. Connecting with your customers' emotions right will require yeah. you being a bit personal and when i say personal we're not saying that you're stepping away from clear cut boundaries but what we're saying is this your your business cannot just be you know so formal that it doesn't mean something to the customer businesses right. that thrive and have good customer retention and have repeat businesses are businesses that the customer can feel that this is my client this is my service provider there's a mm. personal touch in some cases. So that's why you must be able to ensure that a lot of investment, a lot of time, a lot of strategy is devoted into ensuring that you service your customer well. That's the way, that's where the word customer service is gotten from. from. Customer service is not just a department, right? It's, yes, it's a yes. life cycle of a business. Of a business, you understand? Yes. Yes, and yes. depending on your type of business, you must factor in the nature of your business to how you service the customer. Let's use schools, for example. Um, a lot of schools today um, are struggling with some things that have happened over a period of time. Now, people think it's because there's closure or lockdown, but it's because a lot of customers have not been serviced so well that mm. the navigation to the reality of today's schooling system is becoming an opera with parents. Parents, okay. How well have parents been serviced in the area of communication and okay. updating, in the area of openness, mm. in the area of carrying them along? You see, mm. if you segment your servicing your customer, they will also segment their loyalty to you. They will segment their understanding to you. They will segment so many things to you. And so you can't be expecting the best of a customer when you yourself, you are not giving the best as a, as a service provider. As, as a service provider. And the oh. truth about it is that it's a growing curve. Everyone will keep learning and everyone oh. must keep growing in the area because the truth about it is you can never, never satisfy a customer 100%. It's a journey. It's a because journey. Because there are certain times you think you're doing well, something um, will come up and then, of course, you know, you have to meet up to the demand of the hour. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rotimi. Uh, we have a question uh, from Mrs. Rhoda Odigbo uh, online. She is asking, hey. she brings it home. So she wants to know the various categories of customers for uh, ed tech services. Uh, what can be served to the segment starting from underserved communities to low income communities and going forward? 
So she's trying to see if they could be uh, affordable ed tech uh, tools and uh, devices and services that can be offered to communities who are not well to do. I'll, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it, uh, I'll take a one or two points then, Mr. Roti, I'll hand over to you to, uh, to round up on that. So, uh, for ed tech companies, it depends on, uh, on the, on the, company's vision yes it depends on the company's vision now most ed tech companies they are for the average and common man and they are trying to break down their services to reach even the poorest of the poor you agree with me on that now but sometimes you find that the cost of production of some certain devices or services cannot be uh, cannot be cannot be reduced to the basic, uh, to basic Naira and Kobo. It has, there are so many influences on that. So what air tech companies or, uh, or, or technology companies can do is look for a way of sponsoring or uh, subsidizing their products based on sponsorship. So they look for customers who are, uh, rich customers who are interested in the, that segment they try to target and they, make uh, subsidies for production of certain um, uh, devices or certain parts. Now, take, for example, China. China is like one of the world manufacturing company. And these uh, companies in China, they have been designed to what meet any uh, market segment or any kind of customer. So even if that's why you see, the, you hear the Chinese uh, Chinko products and all that any kind of customer you are you want to target the chinese market has it covered compare that to the german or american market that is for above average customer so you get it so there are, there are certain uh, scale of pre, uh, scale of how they how do they put a scale of uh, scale of production that needs to be taken into consideration yes scale of preference and production that needs to be taken into consideration mr rutimi what do you have to say about this well, I always like when Rhoda gives um, questions because, you know, Rhoda is someone that thinks on a broad um, spectrum and perspective. Yes, yes. Uh, but let me tell you this. Um, they, say that, they say that necessity is the mother of invention, right? Yes. Um, you cannot, you cannot, if there are certain things that you cannot achieve, right, outside mm. you looking at the need of the hour. So it's oh. not rocket science. Let me tell you this. It's the same thing in other industries, and we can bring it back to education. So, for example, if you know that the reason why devices cost a lot is probably because of the shipping and import costs. Imports, okay. This is a crisis. Uh, why is it that we cannot set up manufacturing and coupling plants for TAPS in okay. Nigeria? And that becomes part of EdTech solution, which yeah. affects, um, how do you put it now? Helping, helping, um, helping low the cost, cost local to get reduced. Yes, low cost. So you now tell the local uh, manufacturers that look, you you have to develop your host communities. Chinese are already in Nigeria, as like you mentioned. It doesn't always have to be Chinese. We have we have tech experts. So why is it that we can't come up with components and parts um, right. that they can ship from anywhere across the world and then they couple for our sake, for the mm. purpose of education simple tabs that can you know serve the purpose if it's tab you are talking about if it's devices if it's phones if it's android you okay. you know you can have people who can come up with that and it's just legislation there are many times that we are suffering out of intellectual laziness yes, yes. and sometimes a state of land helplessness because mm. if you look at it it's just a policy it's just a policy um, mm. And other people do it. They do it in terms of in the, in the time of Second World War, right? Yes. Um, yes. Women women were drafted into factories. That yes. was the boom of the yes. dungarees era, where people started wearing dungarees. That's the boom that built um, um, the Ford the Ford the Ford vehicle and the Volkswagen vehicle. Yes. Why? Yes. Because the industry necessitated it. Manpower had to be changed from the law of men working alone. To, to the women, women getting involved with production yes. so um i think that that's the way we should also look at it from our perspective that um, we mustn't always wait till something will now um wait till so if, if if we want to get it we need to apply the retail model and the retail no. model simply says that 
we want to be able to ensure that what we are servicing has its reach to the nooks and crannies. And if it's going to be so, one of the easiest ways is to follow what you call supply chain management. management how do we so. distribute tech? Since mm. tech is a useful tool, how do we distribute tech? Distribute tech? Then you go back to say, we already have what you call the local government structure. structure. The NYC is a visible model that has shown that the local government structure works. 774 works. local governments in Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. Therefore, it means that if we can conduct election, we can also retail technology. We can mm. retail technology from the place of service, from the place of device. Okay. And the truth about this is just in the business camera model, right? Yes, we need to yes. also realize that the pace at which it's served is in different dose. dose so yes. um, we don't necessarily have to have all the features. So let me use, I'm not marketing, but let's use DSTV, for example. Okay, not everybody okay. uses DSTV Explorer. Not everybody yeah, uses yes, the yes, full the, bouquet. So yes, yes, uh, we, we need to look at that. And with creativity, with the helps of the people, people like Rhoda, we can yes. segment the market and say, look, these people, this is how much functionality they need. And mm. let's just give them what is, number one, durable, what is accessible, accessible. and what is functional. No aesthetics, no extra uh, boxing, yeah, no, no, no thrills, yes. no thrills, just functional. functional. And then those who are a bit on the upward market can decide to opt for something different. It's different. the same thing with cars. You understand? Mm. I believe that yeah. success leaves clues, and the clues are everywhere. They are everywhere. Thank you, Mr. Rotimi, for that uh, punch. I like that punch. They are everywhere. I like that punch. So uh, I'd like to welcome our online guests. Uh, we have Olubumi, uh, Unsa, uh, Olaladi, Mark Johnson, Edu Crest, uh, Izegbe, Mr. Gabriel, Sir Gabriel. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the welcome to the platform, Mr. Gabriel. My my college pal, uh, Mr. Toby Oyeyemi. Thank you, uh, Peter Peter Joan Triumphant. Thank you for joining, uh, Marcelina, my sister. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Dada Ife Jola, Ife Jola. Thank you for joining, and Daniel Gochuku. Thank you for joining. Uh, also, Sona, colleague for life. Thank you for joining. Uh, Cora for Innocent, thank you for joining. Mr. Joel, thank you for joining. Fumilola, uh, Dopsy, thank you for joining the webinar. And Mr. Ozioma Wilson, thank you for joining the webinar. So, we'll move on to the next uh, key partners. Now, you no business like I was, or, or I started with no business run in isolation, no business run on their own. Any business that is going down. Because of this lockdown, I bet you three or three other businesses are going down because of them. It's a fact, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's, that's the truth, Mr. Rotimi. Any business going down, so it's not a matter of uh, you are you are a comp you are a good competition, uh, your competition or a competitor is going down. No, three or four other businesses are going down because of this lockdown. Just for one, it's a chain reaction. It's a ripple effect that affects. So you should. Have also know your key partners and know who supplies and who uh, uh, reinforce your, your your supply chain. So these are very important in your business model canvas. Your key partners, who are you partnering with? Who are you uh, going to work with? Who, who, who which business uh, businesses are efficient enough to keep your own business running for uh, for a long time and running even without uh, without being in uh, physical meetings or physical operations. Sarah, tell me what do you have to say about key partners? Well, it's um it's the same thing everywhere. Just like you said, uh, you say key partners is is every business works on a tripod model. Uh, yeah. So you should just like a camera without the three legs, it cannot stand properly. Do you understand? Mm. So, number one, you need to understand if your industry is down, your business is down. That's mm. the first thing. If your industry is down, your business is down. So, the people who have um, this kind of I don't care attitude or yes, indifferent that, to, their the the to their industry, mindset, yes. every business is expected to fight for the survival of their industry. Because mm. the moment your industry is down, you begin to go down. That's the truth mm. about it. 
that's the truth about it. Um, and so it's not a matter of, of competition it. now. It's not a matter no, of competition. So for example, now. if you belong to the education space, you need to understand that it's your responsibility to do something about that space, or else very soon the businesses in that space begin to go down. So sometimes when you hear concerns and advocacies, it's not because um, you have people who are probably just angry at life and angry at government. The reason mm. they are speaking is because they understand that it is very, very, very possible that it will get to their doors. You understand? Until it gets to affect someone close by before you realize that a it's sector so, is not over. meant to be left on its own. And that's what that's what that's number one, the sector, the industry. Number two is your affiliates. Now, affiliates are people who probably you do things with or have the capacity for you to do things with them. Now, hmm. if those people also are going down, sooner or later you go down. Even if you they are, even if they are making money or they are in Jude, your success is my success. If Jude doesn't succeed after a while and after a time, there's no proof for me to succeed. Hmm. You understand? Hmm. That's the truth about it. So I must ensure that Jude is doing all he can, not to just eat on the harvest or the savings he's done for before the, the before the lockdown. I must hmm. ensure that Jude is sitting up and driving forward, embracing opportunities, so that hmm. when Jude is in business it creates the reason for me to be in business. And finally, mm. there are people we call enablers. These mm. are people within our direct value chain. So, um, for example, your vendor, right? The people who supply you materials, the people who supply you purposes and businesses. Mm. If those people go down, Jude, yes. you mm. are going down. So yes. sometimes when we look at it, we are all connected one way or the other. Yeah, this is down. the longest time to start competing against ourselves, especially if you're in the same market. This is the wrongest time to start showing how much you know than the other just because of you want to show that you are different. This is the wrongest time for that. Why? Because if you look at it in the truest sense of it, ability to be able to reinvent yourself is not because you are better. Ability to reinvent yourself is because your market exists. exists. And a lot of times, what happens is that you cannot, you cannot thrive outside your market. That's why it's called a market. Market, yes, yes, yes. Now think about it. There's a statement that people normally make. They say that you can you can take a horse to the stream, but yeah, you, you cannot, cannot the horse to drink, drink water. Yes. So what it means is the stream is useless if there's yes. no thirst. If there's no thirst, yes. That's it. The stream is useless if there's no thirst. Yes. But hmm. then, of course, the horse becomes useless if there's no drink. Hmm. Hmm. So, hmm. so we need to begin to ask ourselves, and that's why regulators, administrators cannot afford to just say, look, I'm, I want to solve my own problem first. Because first. my problem is part of your problem. <laughs> hmm. That's the truth. And hmm. we need to understand, we can't waste 24 hours in the day just treating a segment of the market. We have to make sure there's provision for everyone oh, in the market. Yes. Everyone. And that's why hmm. we cannot be quiet at this period. Trust me. We can't afford to be quiet at this right. period. Do you mm. understand? So, I, 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 just like you said, um, anyone, and you know, we, we might not necessarily say this that it has to be everybody, everybody, but the truth is, businesses have leaks, consciously yes. and unconsciously. Consciously. There are people that you can say you vouch for. There are people within your referral range. So, if yes. someone is asking me about technology, I will ask, I, mean, I, I don't need to ask too much around. I'll, I'll mention Jude. If somebody is mm. asking me about curriculum, I'm not going to find it difficult to mention Rhoda. I'm not mm. going to find it difficult to mention uh, names that, you know, uh, think people we've worked with or people we can attest of their character because sometimes you have skilled experts but you have bad attitude, you know? Wow. So, um, yeah, so I would mention people that I know. I'll mention a Joel. I'll mention a Rhoda. I'll mention few people that, you know, easily comes to mind because I've worked with them. Or it's something, there are some names that you don't need to think too far before you wow. say these are the people. You understand? Yes, now, yes. those people are the first I need to call together and say, guys, we can't be quiet trying to sort ourselves out. There's nothing like reflection at this hour. Reflection <laughs> time has passed. It, you don't have enough time to reflect. As you're reflecting, you're reviewing. As you're reviewing, you're reforming. As you're reforming, you're remodeling. It yes, is the changes yes. that we bring to table that we cannot say that the industry has been saved. Same. And how do you save an industry? Pretty much is by the expert in that industry saying that, look, we've thought about the problems that exist and we're creating a case for change. Now, okay. the case for change that we're bringing 
will now make people begin to adjust to the market realities. Mm -hmm. and then everybody will now see the need to say, number one, we should not just go online because right. everybody is getting to confuse the need to go online. online. And, <laughs> okay, so we're okay now we're online. What next? What, what should next? we be saying online? Your messaging is different from my messaging. messaging. In some cases, yeah. some of us we need to reskill before we upskill. Up because if you upskill out of context, then that's that's actually no skill. No skill, yes. Yes, yes. You know? yes. So we, mm. this is a time where we need to humble ourselves and hear, put our ears on the ground. It doesn't stop us from being experts, it doesn't yeah. stop us from being great, it doesn't remove or reduce the achievements of the yester years and yester weeks or yester months. Mm. But what we're saying is simple. When we get to that point, we're able to now say, guys, you know what? This is how we are moving forward, right? Even yes. eagles sometimes have a break. They take yes. up their feathers to grow new yes. ones. So yes. everybody yes. needs to understand that's the blessing that we can get from COVID-19 or the seasons of lockdown. Yes. But you see, yes. one of the, well, the strangest realities that the learning sector like education, we're not doing that. Instead, we are showing survival skills. Nobody cares mm. about your survival skills. So as, at, at, this, at this point, I'm, at this I'm point, saying that you know what I know these tools than you. That's mm. a it, people are laughing at us across the world, hmm. and we are, we are, yeah, because we are demonstrating skill acquisition, acquisition. outside market at, intelligence. Yes, sir, in, within a, we are, we are trying to uh, uh, display skill acquisition when we are thinking. <laughs> <Happy>. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Mr. Rotimi, for taking time with the key partners. Uh, the next thing we are going to be looking at are key activities. What key activities do your value proposition require? Now, every business has an operation, and every uh, operation within the business is made up of routines. So what routines? Are your routines problem-solving routines or uh, networking routines or production routines and what or relationship routines with your customers? So that has to be very, very clear to the business owner. What are your routines in your business? You don't copy. You could, you could try to replicate routines of other businesses or other competitors or other people in the same industry, but make sure your routines are a bit much more uh, unique. That's where it ties into your value proposition. Mr. Rotimi, what do you have to say about this? So when you say routines, routines should come as a result of processes. I've mastered my process, I've created an agenda, then I now use routine. Routine is more or less like saying now, my procedure over my process, this is how I do it. So that's why you have what you call days of the week. That's why you have operating hours. That's what defines operating hours. That's what defines um, activity as it, as it is. Do you understand? Yes, so yes. Your, your 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 routines are tied are tied to such realities. So mm. when we now look at it, everybody needs to understand that routines should not be what drives us. We yes. are the ones that will drive routine. routines. This is why it's possible for days of the weeks to change. So because yes. I'm sure this lockdown, a lot of people have worked um, longer hours in some cases. At, at some home. people, their day does not start until 10, as opposed yeah. to usually 4 a.m. Yeah, their yeah. day does not end on an end until 2 a.m., as opposed to maybe 9 p.m. Yeah. So um, that's it. Uh, and that's the, uh, that's the approach I want us to take routine from. So the same thing, as you migrate your business, as you transit to going online, um, your routine must be the end product of your process. process. If you've improved or simplified your process, if you've developed your process to a particular level, your routine can change. Now, bring that to some sectors that sometimes look like they are casting stones in what they do. A sector mm. like education, for example. Education. Okay. The biggest problem that will be a stumbling block to a sector like education is this thing called routine. Because it's routine that takes precedence over process instead process. of process over over routine. So that's why you have issues about third term or no third term. Third term is not the person. Third term <laughs> is a post, is the subset of routine. Routine. Do you yes, understand? Yes, that's yes, why yes. we come up. So that's why we can't think about school as Monday to Thursday. We think about school as Monday to Monday Friday. to Friday. Friday. That's why we cannot stop um, the conversation of changing curriculum and turning curriculum to subject. subject. That's that, that why that's why we cannot make a subject a curriculum. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, yes, yes, routine yes, yes. is the last actual route of expression to expression. To, to to the process. So the process. first thing we need to get is our processes. processes. Now I know who my market is. I know where my customers are. I know mm. how to connect with them. I know how mm. to reach them. I know what they require. I know the product level at which I create conversion to them. 
then yeah. I now create a routine to sustain that result, mm -hmm. to sustain that reality, and to give me the kind of reward I'm looking for. Hmm. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Rotimi. Now, these key activities is also important at this point in time because some people are struggling to actually uh, know how to uh, use their processes online because that's one key thing that they are missing. And I think it will change the, 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 the understanding of what we mean by employment because now you might see people telling you, I can work from home and I can do three jobs. So you can't lock me, you can't keep me uh, 24 hours in your company. I have to work three jobs and I can do it from home. So that would change the perspective of our uh, business uh, activities and processes to, Absolutely. to include those who can work from home. It's not compulsory that everybody must be in the office at the same time because we have this mindset that uh, I must be seeing you so that I can pay you. That is not supposed as far the job is, is being done and as far the job is being attended to anywhere in the world, that should be enough to pay anybody or that should be enough for your business to run without uh, any problem. So if the person is not doing the job from home, that's a different case. But if they can do run it from home, they should be able to do the business at any point or anywhere they are. Now, I would like to welcome Mr. Joel Olani. Uh, thank you for joining. Mr. Favor Edogun, thank you for joining the class. And Mr. Uh, okay, Mrs. Adiola Taylor, thank you for joining. Mr. Ashimolo, my brother, Ademu Yuwa, thank you for joining the class. Uh, Tumba Lodiko, thank you for joining. Olushen uh, Wedun, thank you for joining the, the, the webinar. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, we're going to be looking at key resources. Key resources. What key resources do our value proposition require? Now, you need resources to run your business, right? And one thing people are getting wrong is that they think of money first to run their business before they even start thinking of other resources that makes the money work. So that is where most business uh, owners are getting it wrong or entrepreneurs, newcomers. They think of money. How much do I need? I need one billion naira to run my business. But you don't even have uh, real resources that will make that money, produce more money. And it's very, it's very key. Your resources aside money should be well sorted out before you even start thinking of money. So when you are writing your business plan, everything you need to do that business without money sort it out, uh, put it put it in black and white and make it, uh, test it and see how it operates without money. Then you know you need minimal money to even start running your business. We have instances, we have instances where now you go to some markets, like you go to computer village, you start seeing people selling uh, shoes, selling clothes from their car boots. You see a yeah. car, and you see the shoes and everything on that. And those kind of people now, do they need a physical store? They don't need a physical store. But if you ask them at the uh, point of initiation, they will start saying, I need a big store. I need a store in some uh, so place to start running my business. But now you see people have started improvising. I have a car so I can sell even close to my place. People are selling bread at the back of their boots. So do you think that person will still need to open a shop, a bread shop, when they can sell it at the back of their boots? Mr. Rojimi, what do you have to say about this? Okay, I'll just start by the last thing you said before this question. The first thing is office concept has changed. So when you talk mm. about office, um, office is not a place. Office is, is a mechanism. It's a mechanism. You understand? So, yeah, so if you look at it, um, someone that sells ice cream, his office is his bike and his product. You understand? Mm. The mechanism of selling. A kiosk is an office, right? Yes, um, yes. Definitely. So when we say we need people to come to the office, what we are saying is we need people to be able to drive the tools and mechanism of work. And now, with the concept of what is happening now, office does not mean a physical place. At all. Right? Office has transcended beyond a physical space. Number two, um, in ask, answering your question, um, when you look at it and uh, you're talking about um, resources, um, we need to understand what resource is. It mm. means that you need to look at a source and something that can repeat that thing to you. That's what makes a resource. So when you look at it and people talk about money, the truth is money is very important. But what is money? M-O-N-E-Y. What does it really mean? The first mm. thing about money, let's just use the acronym, is M. M talks about you need men. 
Men. See, sometimes when you want to start a business or when you want to run a business, the first thing you should be looking for is men, men. And so men. I know that I want to do something in this period. I need men. What type of people I need? I need a tech person. That's tech a man. Person. You know, and I'm when I'm saying men or man, I'm not saying gender. gender. You know, so for example, a school, a school should look at it that oh, they don't need money right now. They need man. They need men. They need people who can help them revamp curriculum, interpret curriculum. That's what it means. You know, then what is all? We need opportunities. In other words, we need to begin to have depth of insight to the market realities of the now and the future. So when you look at it, we need men. We need opportunities. Number. Then the third one is N. We need numbers. Numbers. Num numbers. Business must always learn to gravitate towards numbers. Numbers can be gotten from data. Numbers mm. can be gotten from surveys. Numbers can be gotten from direct engagement. That's why you see that one of the most effective tools of marketing is direct marketing. Direct why? Marketing. It speaks to numbers. numbers. And then what is E in the spelling of money? E talks about we need experience. experience. See, until people experience you, referral will be weak. It's mm. because somebody has experienced you and they found out that, oh, man, this is great. They now have what you call testimonials. That mm -hmm. thing strengthens. There's something about experience. That's why sometimes some people don't mind giving you a free trial. Look at the language online. They say free yeah. version. Yeah. Free free trial. Trial. Why, what are they doing that for? They want mm. you to experience their product. Yeah. Do you understand? Experience their product. And then, there's, there's, yeah. there's, sorry. There is uh, one thing in Nigeria that thrives or that I compare their business model in Nigeria and compare it to the... Hello? Yes, I can so, hear you. Yeah, I compare Nigerian business model to, especially in tech, to the business model we have overseas. Look at companies like Zoom. They say, try before you buy, right? Try before you yeah. buy. But most companies in Nigeria is buy before you try. That is what I see. And that is what has been prevalent. They say buy it first before you try. Even if yeah. Yeah, they will be so blunt with it that other companies giving it free, Google Classroom free, everything, almost free platforms. And they say, if you like, you can, you can actually run the free uh, free trial indefinitely, except you want more, experience, uh, more, uh, more features, then you start buying it. But our business model in Nigeria, we don't like that, giving that free thing. We prefer a buy before you try. And that does not create a good experience. What do you have to say? So, of course, it's, it's it. your exper experience is tied to our philosophy as a people. Most people don't have value in their philosophy. Most people are exploiters in their philosophy. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So mm. that's why somebody can say, I beat my chest. Let me ensure you experience me first. That's why you find out that when people talk about collaboration or partnership, the very first thing that people see is people using other people other instead people. of people giving themselves to other people. They are not seeing a longevity side because of scarcity mentality that they have. Hmm. You understand? And so if yeah. you look at it, just like I said, we all need money, but we should look at it from paper money or we should look at it from the real side of it, which is we need men, we need opportunity, we need numbers, we need experience. And finally, the last letter is why. We why? need you. See, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't factor themselves as an asset to their business. That's why mm -hmm. everything that matters to them is everything outside of themselves. How, how mm -hmm. I wish I had money. How I oh. wish I had. How I wish I had. What about you? You sometimes you are enough. You are enough what? a trial. You are enough a product to yourself. You understand? Mm -hmm. So yes. if you don't believe in yourself, how do you want others to believe in you? Yes, 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 yes. Thank yes, you, Mr. Rich. Yes, yes. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, we'll quickly move. We'll run through the rest uh, to then we'll go to the mechanism. Revenue streams. Now some businesses rely on just one revenue stream. You know that, Mr. Rotimi. Some businesses rely on Insta rather than having streams of income from that business. I'll give you an example. Uh, Apple, they began selling their iPod before they started selling their iPhone. Then they found out that they can also sell online services like their iTunes, their their web platform, their their what they call it, their their Apple Pay and all that. Uh, this uh, other brands or businesses they build around their system. So they have several rev uh, streams of income from just one product, and that is a very very key mechanism in keeping afloat and keeping your business running so that at this point in time where you have lockdown, you might not 
even if one revenue stream is shut down others will still keep running and keep your business running that is very important most nigerian businesses are focused on one stream of income one one way traffic that is only the place they can make money outside that they cannot make money once that process is blocked and at this point it's it suffice i suffice to say that every business should have an e-commerce i don't know what you are going to be selling whether you think it's relevant to you or not you need an e-commerce platform or you need to scale your business to the point of selling it online not just through your website but you have to be selling something within your business you just have to be selling something whether it's a good whether it's a services you need to be selling something mr rotimi please in two minutes what do you have to say about this uh, income streams most times is tied to the value proposition and the format that the business is premised upon. Okay. Um, sometimes the reason you are having income streams is not because of just amassing wealth, but it's because mm -hmm. you've been able to look at the different forms of expression your business has. So the more expression your business has, the better the possibility for income stream. Income stream means the ability for income to flow towards your company as you deliver value to solve a need or to solve a problem. Okay. Now, this is where I might say something that might challenge a lot of people's understanding. When you want to have more income stream, one of the things that you need to be careful of is the word focus. Because a lot of times we misunderstand focus out of context. Sometimes mm -hmm. your being too focused is actually what limits the capacity for you having multiple streams of income. Yeah. Because you are so centered on something, you become fixed in the process. Yes. Businesses are meant to evolve. Therefore, while we are focused in principle, we must be flexible in practice. Yes. Do you yes. understand? Yes. So that yes. whenever there's a need to change the form or format of our business, we will do so so that we can still have income streams, streams. flowing towards us. That's mm. what's happening, for example, within the education space. Yeah. We are so focused on routine and the services that we provide that we are not flexible to the point whereby income stream is now being stifled. It's not flowing towards us. It's the same thing we can see from our regulators. We are mm. so focused, which is good, but we have become fixed instead of being flexible. So flexible. we are having challenges over calendar Instead of uh, the economy, of, and this is the truth. Is the truth? Is the truth? Is the truth? You know. So that's why we cannot comprehend certain things as a people. You know. So we need to get to the point where we are able to, you know, move beyond that, and then we we'll now begin to see that be focused but be flexible. And then when you are flexible, you change your form. So every form. business can change its form. Do you understand? Oh, yes, there's a yes, minimum yes. version. There's a yes, maximum yes. version. There's a premium version. Yes, there's a base. Yes. Different levels of the business version. There's a general version. There's an exclusive version. The same business, different mm. expression. Expressions. Mm. Thank you so much, Mr. Rotimi. Uh, Mrs. Uche Valida, thank you for joining the, the webinar. Well, thank you for joining uh, Loretta Iwara. Thank you, teachers meet. Thank you for joining the webinar. Uh, now, finally, we we'll look at cost cost structure. We'll not be look. We'll not be talking too much about that. You know your business. You know what you're offering, and you should be able to put a good pricing to your business. Very important. Pricing is important. Don't put pricing that uh, will ruin your business, or don't put pricing that will drive. Uh, customer but since you already know your uh your customer segment so if you are creating a, a, a business model that targets only rich or wealthy people definitely you know how to put your price i've seen instances that a tailor very good tailor she was uh, recommended to one of the uh, uh I, I think the first ladies of a state to go and sew a, sh a kind of cloth anyway. And the everything that will cost is just like 10K. Are you getting it, Mr. Rotimi? Yeah. So they sent the very good fashion designer to the first lady. And the first thing that he or she he did was they asked her, well, how much, how much will it cost? And the, uh, he said, uh, 10,000 naira ma. And the woman said, okay, okay, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. And that's how he lost the business. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is how he lost the business because his target was has always been the average Nigeria or the average people sewing clothes. So when he when he was trying to step up his business, he found that he, he made a mistake at the initial time. So by this time now, actually he has stepped up and is now doing well with uh, first ladies and uh, uh, what they call it high wealthy people who are trying to make clothes with uh, make clothes from him. So he has stepped up his game. But that initial point, he was very naive and he just called a price. And you find out that that same lady would pay a hundred thousand for that same shirt, for that same style, for that same material, and would be happy wearing it. So, Mr. Arotimi, mean, what 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 do you have to say about that? Just in two minutes. So okay, so when you talk about costing, um, well, we cannot blame that 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 illustration you gave. We cannot blame that person. You know, some things you learn with time, but it's better if the person had a support structure like a coach or a mentor. Some okay. things would not necessarily have to cost him that kind of experience. But you need to understand the reason we charge or the reason we charge what we charge is mm. not also because the person has a lot of money. Money, okay. Because you might as well also outprice yourself. See, if we can underprice, it means yes. we can overprice. Overprice, so yes. People outprice themselves too, and nobody calls them back. We must yeah. make sure that one of the reasons why we charge is because of access to us, not the oh. enormity of what we will do. Ooh, so a lot no. of people look at things that they do well. It's not much now. I'm not just. I'm just going to do three things. Then mm. they forget that the value is access to them. Mm. Do you get? Okay. See, this the real value time. is the access to the it's your the, access. To so the for services, example, so dude, somebody can say, Mr. Ita, I want you to do a training for my staff, and mm. then I say, okay, I'm going to charge um half a million for to train a day. And then they will be like, what? I thought we'll just give you 50k. Why can't we give you 50,000? It's not just to talk. And the point is, even if I'm just going to say two sentences, it's access to me that I'm charging for, not the activity of what I do. The same thing goes for coaching and consulting. The same thing goes for mentoring. Someone else can give you 100 books every day to justify his charge. Another person can just tell you that you will only meet with me two hours every month. Mm. Now, it is the access to that person that the person is charging for. That's why we place premium on ourselves, not mm. on our do. Okay. Are you following? Yes, yes, we yes. Place yes. On, on ourselves. Number on two, our, on, our, on our knowledge, our intelligence, not just on yes. our. Number two, people pay more if what you are delivering requires speed. So, for example, you hear people say it is express service. Express people service. pay more when it is something so if you if i know that you need something urgently it's a demand on my time it's a demand for speed therefore it is a demand for premium premium yes because i'm not taking my time i probably will shove some things aside to attend to this thing 100 okay. percent. but on the underlying factor we believe that the reason why you are putting premium on yourself and putting mm-hmm. premium on your time is because you yourself, you are worth something. something A lot yes. of people use this principle and they are not themselves something that you can worth and uh, quantify yeah. worth. Yeah. So it's not enough to charge right or charge high. Yeah. It's to ask yourself, have you built yourself over time? Have you been raised? Have you been supported? Have you been mentored? Have you been coached? Yeah. Have you been trained? That the yeah. value you deliver, somebody will say that, you know, it's true. I true. spent 10 minutes with Jude and it was worth every penny. Thing. As opposed to spending 30 days with someone else and it was I, at a cheaper rate. <laughs> that, that's yeah. where in education we need to understand. That's where schools need to understand. There's a minimum value. So when you talk about honorarium, you can standardize honorarium. You can say ah, yes. honorarium should yeah. not be less than 70,000. Yes. Should not be yes. less than 25,000. Yes. That's honorarium. Yes. That's yes. because it's a free will. But when yes. it comes to expertise, you can't place everybody on the same standard. At all. Because at we are not different. We are not the same. Same. We're not the same. So if somebody does does a, a nice flyer and says he's doing maybe customer service, and I mm. say okay, you know what, I want to do customer service, and then mm. I say okay, participant to pay fifty thousand naira, and then mm. another person says participant should pay five thousand naira. You yes. know, I say how can Mister Ita is a thief? Uh-uh, <laughs> why do you want to charge that? Well, I'm not for everybody. I already understood that from the beginning. Your market. But even when I charge less, the reason I'm charging less is not because I'm hungry. Oh, I'm yes. charging. For the purpose that is tied to the process of my business. So I can charge low. It is intentional. It is deliberate. It is looked into the process. Some of the Mm -hmm. things we do is to create a sales funnel. 
So Honorable. sometimes we lower the price to bring people in to experience us. And it, sometimes yes, we don't even charge to bring people in to experience us. Experience and us, then yeah. we charge. But you see what happens? A lot of people try to play smart. They mm. come in, try to zap in everything. They don't yeah, want yes. because, look, it yes. will meet you in front. You yes. understand? What yes. you sow, yes. you repeat. repeat. You yes. must believe that value begets value. If you value. pay for something, you pay attention. You and when pay you pay attention. attention, guess what? You also you, begin to ensure that people do what pay for yeah, attention. Yes, that's what, yes, that's what yes. you do. Thank you, Mr. Rotimi, for your cost structure analysis. Uh, we'll look at those online. Ah, Mr. Peace, my brother, uh, La Jesu Bamidele, thank you for watching. Uh, Mr. Favor, thank you for watching. And uh, Adeo Esther, thank you for watching. Okay, yes. Uh, Mr. Uche Valida, yes. Uh, deep cost is based on access to service provider. Yes, focus on the vision, but be flexible in practice. Yes, that's was for Mr. Roti. Uh, now we are looking at the mechanics. Now, uh, this is the mechanics, business model mechanics. Now, one is the... Look at your business currently. One is the the, the lowest, and ten is the being the highest. So number one, we look at switching costs. If you are running a business and it is easy for your customer to to switch to the other uh, your competitors or to the other business, definitely your switching cost is very low. But if you make your switching costs very high, now take for example the iPod or the iPod that came that came out at that point, and what did Steve Jobs uh, was selling? What was Steve Jobs selling to uh, marketers or no, to the audience or to the public? Steve Jobs was selling the iPod when it came out there that you can have one thousand music in one iPod, meaning you can keep playing the music. Over and over, you can install several music inside your iPod and up to a thousand, which was very, very new to the market. And you, normally, then we had our DVD, which only 20 music and is filled up. And it's even difficult to have double CD albums then. But Steve Jobs said, In my iPod, I will give you a thousand music. And one thing customer didn't know then was that to switch from your, your those music to a different device was definitely not available so the switching cost of your music from one device to another was not available but the idea that was sold to customers was 1000 music and that made sense so it had a high switching cost but low entry cost so customers could purchase an ipod and get all the music in their ipod but they were not able to switch that's music or transfer those music to a different device, so it was, has a high switching cost. So the same thing, your business should also have a high switching cost. You should make your experience so ideal and so uh, so so rich that anybody coming to uh, experiencing your services or businesses for the first time, it will be difficult for them to just switch. To somebody else that is where value comes in that's where value comes in mr roti what do you think about uh, talk about uh, uh switching cost yeah, switching cost is actually is actually a business strategy um mm. and 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 sometimes um we 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 can do that at different levels so like you use that example of um apple um, yes. that was what they did it was a it was a linear approach so saying that no problem you can do what you want to do but guess what we're using our features to upsell our market do you mm. understand but in yes. some cases some cases you might find out that um cost um cost cost is not just the element we people use in terms of getting people to switch over or to prevent people from switching over yeah. sometimes what we look at is we look at some steps and procedures and say okay you know what let us create a what we call a backward integration Backward. Uh, backward integration or forward integration is also a very useful tool. So let me use an example. So um, you might decide that you don't like a particular soft drink, a okay. particular soft drink from a particular company. And, yes. and then people are saying that, you know what, why are you taking carbonated drinks? You know, you need to be healthy. In yes. fact, if you don't take anything aside water. But you see, some of those people, they've already done what you call backward integration. What you need to produce a soft drink is water, isn't it? 
Yes, yes. So those people already are in the market of water. So mm. if you switch, are you for me? <laughs> you already <laughs> might be meet them there. So okay, fine. You, you are meet changing, them at the other you end. Are changing <laughs> to water. We are still selling water. water. So backward <laughs> integration is I'm using okay. what my raw material yes. is yes. Yes. to become <laughs> my business sustainability so or become my customer retention strategy. And sometimes mm. they take it a step further, right? They not say, okay, you know what, let's do vertical forward integration. So mm. forward integration is not saying that, okay, okay, okay. Um, sorry, what I explained was actually forward integration. Backward yeah, integration yeah. is not yeah. say that, okay. Um, so I know that um, the people who are looking for juice instead of soft drink market, yeah. they require the juice actually to come out from a farm. So let me fire fire. up all the people who are producing fresh are producing orange. Yes, which of course is something that happened in uh, I won't mention names, but something I know, I know the I know the brand. Yeah, I know the brand. So, you know the <laughs> yeah, I did say it too. So if I if I if I buy up the farms and then yes. people are pro promising that they produce hundred percent concentrate of juice, juice. but I buy up the farm and the farm cannot produce concentrate, at the end of the day, we're all stuck with what. Mixed juice. Mix, mixed juice, yes. Chemicalized so juice. That's, that's it. So you understand? So that's backward integration. That way, it's still something that if I can't change the force of the open market, I will change it from the point of um, product or customer choice. Product choice. So that's why sometimes, and that's you see it in many, many, many companies create a brand, an adverse brand that is still in their ecosystem. The ecosystem, yes. But people don't know. So for example, people, do people, yeah. people don't know. So you can have a school. Like you can have a school that is a premium brand that can mm -hmm. set up a school that is less of its premium level and yeah, service yeah. delivery yeah. and put it in the same market space. And you will mm. never know. Uh, you will yes. never know that ownership is still back to... So you just think that's the same is, is, you will never know. There never are many know. things like that that people don't even know. So <laughs> it's the same thing. So if, for example, if I'm doing a business development uh, mm. um, a strategy session with Jude, and mm. we're maybe charging X amount, yes. right? Yes. Uh, so you can say, okay, uh, I think it's cheaper with Jude. All right, mm. let me go for Jude. Yes, um, bet. <laughs> you can have it with Jude. But if you now say, ah, no, 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 that one with Jude is expensive. Let me go and meet the person individually. Okay. You don't know whether it is designed as a funnel. Where, well, well, if you go to Jude, fine. It's a, it's a multiple economy. Economy, you yes. it's still an it's still economy. economy. You understand? <laughs> if you go to the person I mentor, it's still an economy. economy. <laughs> so, but then we must be forward thinking, thinking. to create mm. alliances that are subtle, that okay. in a covert way, nobody knows that this is the same market. Market, market. In a covert way, it looks like we are different people. people. So collaboration is not always when we are seen together, doing together. Doing together Sometimes yeah. collaboration will be running a script together mm. even though yes. we're standing apart apart <laughs> i like that i like that i like that now uh, uh i would like to welcome mrs indidio lamidia dekunle my sister welcome welcome akin somi ola jumoke thank you favor very energy thank you for joining if we tom tom samuel thank you for joining the the webinar Some thank you thank that, yes. that 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 guy needs to be arrested <laughs> he's, he's online with us he's online watching with us and so we're going to call the acquire of state government to arrest him <laughs> he's, yes. he's seen okay. against the state he's seen against the state <laughs> so we look <laughs> at recurring revenues recurring revenues so your business model mechanics should also include recurring revenues you should yes. like we talked about multiple streams of income so that makes it possible for you to have recurring revenue or you make sure that your business model is designed in a way that it's it it has one way of making money and it also has several other ways of funneling that uh, that wealth or that uh, uh, money or that link to the main channel. So these are how you create recurring revenues, Mr. Rotimi. What do you have to say about that? Okay, so um, recurring revenue. Um, it's also the same thing as saying repeat business. Repeat right? business. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So um, what? What? That's why a lot of times people must not be interested in just making a sale. Making mm. a sale is is the process of conversion, right? Conversion. But yes. recurring business starts with what is called marketing. Marketing. Now a lot of people 
people don't understand that marketing marketing is a sum total of the activities that leads to you delivering a sale. Is there are activities before a sale? So if yeah. I want somebody to keep coming back, there are some things I must put in place that is deliberate. Great. Okay. Yes. Yes. Is what you mean? Oh, it seems we lost his signal. Let's see. Okay. It's still on. Okay, okay, you're on, you're on. So that's what we mean by when we say creating an addictive demand. Creating an addictive demand is saying, I want somebody to really be interested in what I do, right? Mm. Yes. So that the person is just stuck on me. You. It's almost like being on drugs. Do you get what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Addiction. Addiction, yeah. So how do you do that? It means that I must profile the ideal customer. I must nope. look at what they want and then mm. give it to them in such a sequence that they keep coming back. So, for mm. example, you find that you find that that's why people think about things they do when you call after sales service. service. That's why you find out that people actually deliberately do things about giveaways. That's giveaways. why you find out that people look at that. Okay, so a lot of people don't understand. Many people just go on Instagram and have Instagram live. They think it's just so that they can be seen. <laughs> Sometimes seen, Instagram yeah. Live is just to ensure that continuity in the face of the customer is there. Customer there so that yeah. you are not going to miss having to engage those people. So my <laughs> top of the mind recall is there. Visibility yeah. is there. Yeah. Engagement is there. Sometimes yeah. some people do an act of good in terms of mm. building goodwill so that the customer is always looking at them as, oh, this is why I love this my brand. Love. They yeah. are always meeting to my kind of inclination. Do you know what I'm trying to say? You're meeting so, the customer any at every point in uh, time these and things, every platform. These things are they create what you call sublimal effect in someone. someone. Do you understand? So yeah. that's why you find out that there are some brands and um, they will sponsor some soap operas. So that when you look at the lifestyle of the people in the soap opera, you associate it with the it's use of their brand. product. Brand. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. And that thing creates an addictive demand. If you look at the music industry today, right? Yeah. Sometimes some choice of clothes, some choice of fashion, yeah. right? Is is inspired by the lyrics that you find in music. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. yes. And that also facilitates trade. Do you mm. get? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So if somebody's singing and is always using a red plastic cup. The disposable mm -hmm. cup people naturally will buy is red. Right. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. So yes. what is that? So you find out that a lot of times these people sometimes do it unconsciously. But the ones who are wise, who are deliberate, yeah. they do it, and that's why you hear things like product placement. Mm -hmm. They do it on purpose. Why Pop. should we eat popcorn in a in a cinema? In a cinema, is it compulsory? It? <laughs> <laughs> it's called recurring demand, recurring income. So this it's just almost like as much as you are making provision to buy every ticket, you are also buying popcorn in the process. Yes, yes, yes. You understand? Yes. It is yes. almost like traditional. You go to see an an and, and, so and, and buy meat pie. <laughs> you understand? You go to see a movie, you buy hot dog or you buy popcorn. Popcorn. They make it so simple. You understand? That you and the price, say... yeah. So you don't sometimes <laughs> query the price. Popcorn, you can buy 50 naira, 100 naira. You buy 500 yeah. naira in some yeah. cases. Yeah. And the quantity, before you know, you are biting your finger, it's finished. Yeah. Why? <laughs> it's a science. It's a science, Jude. It's a science. It's a science. Now, yeah. when you now migrate this thing to online, it mm. means you have studied buyer behavior, yeah. and you are now using technology to accelerate or amplify the My... success rate of what you do. Yeah. Mm, do you understand? Yes, yes. That's how it is. That's how it is. Mm. So, for example, instead of you spending too much money to design a brochure and try mm. to find how many people to, why not show the limit of what you have? Just mm. give the foretaste of the knowledge of what you can deliver. Ah, some mm. people say, don't mind that guy is Igbo. Don't mind that yeah. guy is Yoruba. Don't mind Yoruba. that lady, she's Aosa. Uh -huh. okay. Let them hear the Aosa or the Igbo or the Yoruba yes. guy. And they see that, you know what, all the sentiments people are saying, this guy is too expensive. Mm -hmm. That one is still this. I don't like his style. Uh, the yeah. other time, I don't like yeah. his this. People can <laughs> tear people down. But the way yeah. to overcome that and not be subjected to people's prevalent converse conversation, yes. give a taste of your market. market. You understand? And when yeah. you give a taste, you know what, that's why they call it sampling. sampling. You give a taste, you create an appetite. Right. You create an appetite, you create a craving. Cool. You create a craving, you create hunger. Okay. You create hunger, you create demand. demand. And once there's demand, there must be supply. That's the market cost. Hmm. Demand, supply. And supply. Demand and supply. So we must create a strategy 
that will lead people to demanding us, oh. that will lead people to demanding our service. service. And that's why sometimes you need to understand that some things will never grow until you open it up. Up, oh, yes, yes, yes. Sometimes yes, some yes. things that we call special secret trade secrets, secrets they yeah. need to become public secrets <laughs> before people so now say, you know so what, there's more from from there. Yes. yes, and that's yes. why most of us we are not serving, we are under serving in, in education in Africa. Education. The world needs to hear the things that you can say. You don't say because of us, the technology is coming from other places. Uh -huh. The world needs to hear the things that or Joel Olani or Roda or Digo, a Tony Sam Melo, and so many of us. If yeah, we open the door to understand that education is global, businesses global. are global, you know, we would surprise ourselves for what we can do. Hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Rotimi. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lori, uh, Lucia Gumachi, thank you for joining. Uh, Mrs. Oluto in Johnson, Oladipo, thank you for joining. Joma Edith Opa, Mrs., thank you for joining. Uh, the parents... The parent master, Mr. Kirokpo Akinlola, thank you for joining the, the webinar. Thank you so much for joining. I'll quickly go through the it's seven processes, but we'll just give it a minute each so that we'll round up this session. We are up to an hour plus or 90 minutes plus. So earning and versus spending. Now, some businesses, uh, when you're starting some businesses, you need you need to you, you need to spend money. Now look at the PC model before Dell came into the market. The PC model was they create certain PCs and that's computers, personal computers. They create laptops or they manufacture laptops and they sell. So it means if people don't buy the laptop, it they run at a loss, meaning they have actually spent money, and because they are not selling. They are running at loss so it becomes what uh, it becomes a very very bad business model now even for for companies that make smartphone make a great big company like sony sony had a uh, market but they found out that they had their competition very very uptight against their toe-to-toe -to -toe with them their products are good but they were finding it difficult to sell the mass produ uh, products or phones they have manufactured and you know, each year or in every six months, you have a new brand of phone, a new model, a new uh, shiny thing on a phone that makes it a new brand. So what Dell actually did when they were coming to the market, Dell allowed retail customization. So if you want to buy a Dell laptop now, you just go online, customize it and pay for it before it's manufactured. You get it. You go online, you yeah. customize it with their simulation. You pay for it before it's manufactured, which makes a lot of sense. Which makes a lot yeah. of sense. So, what was the essence of create, uh, manufacturing PCs that you are not too sure who will buy it in bulk or who will want to pay at that particular price? But Dell actually made the model breakthrough in their model, which they allow you to customize your PC. And you pay for it before it arrives your doorstep. So that is what they were earning before they actually start spending. While other companies in the same PC market were already spending before they start earning. Uh, we'll go down with uh, uh, game changing cost, stru uh, cost structure. So your cost structure should very uh, is also very important in which how you cost your cost your products or services matters a lot and like mr rotimi was saying saying that you have the uh, the backward the backward and the forward uh, uh, cost structure yes yes you have the backward and the forward so if you if your cost cost structure is that good no matter what customers are seeking for you will always get them to pay or or funnel that uh, part of their spending to your channel so that is very important uh quickly uh, get others to do the work now that's i'll quickly run down with it that facebook is an example of that uh, this look your business model should run in the sense that others will be doing the work are you getting like facebook now facebook has the platform we are just putting content there so we are doing the work for facebook facebook doesn't sell content facebook sells its platform so while we are doing the work even trying to connect with everybody around the world Facebook is just there folding our, their hands, making sure the platform is running smoothly for us to do the work. So 
every content provider on Facebook or any social media platform, they are the ones doing the work, not Facebook. Facebook is just to provide the platform while others are doing the work. So the same thing with your business structure, you should look for a way to make others do the work while you just provide a platform for them to operate. That is very important. Uh, number six, scalability. How do you scale your business? Most, like I was saying, your business should be scaling at this point in time. Businesses that are not scaling will die a natural death. That is very important. So your scalability factor should be high. Like I told you, the business model mechanics, number one is the lowest, while number 10 is the highest form of your business uh, mechanics. So scalability should be high. Your business should be able to sell beyond just your office or beyond just your regional area. Look at the Chinese market. Alibaba came on board and they made it possible for all Chinese manufacturers to have access to the rest of the world, which would have been impossible without uh, selling online so online marketing makes it possible to scale and the final one there is protection from competition yes i like collaborating but will not be blind to that uh, competitions we have competitors though we might not say it this is my competitor but we know we have competitors now mr rotimi how do you protect yourself from competitor uh, competition or for the com uh, competitors Okay, thank you very much. One of the ways you can protect yourself from competition is to actually understand that you have to avoid the look-alike syndrome. Um, mm. Everyone must not be difficult to identify, you know, because it's a world of pick and choose. Pick and and choose. if we're going to pick and we're going to choose, then mm. it shouldn't be difficult. So imagine you have 20 green apples and then you have one red apple. Apple. It yes. will definitely get to catch your attention. The attention span is so low in the business world that you don't make it an intellectual exercise for someone to identify what you bring to the world, oh. what you offer, especially when you are at the aspiring emerging phase. Please. For established people, it is easy to take on a lot of things. But those who are in the emerging and aspiring phase, you can't afford to find it difficult for you to mm. be seen as you. That's one. Yes. Another way to protect yourself from competition is to ensure that you lock up your business code or secret in your customer user experience. See, mm -hmm. there are many things in the business life cycle that is subjected to so many things. Yes. Now, your, bro your business processes... Um, mm. Your product, your pricing might not always be the best. There's always something trying to beat your service. Services. Some people benchmark their growth around you. But mm. you see, even when they are best, you become the best of the best. Do you yes. get what I'm trying to say? Yes. People can say, well, ah, this is also another great one, but it will not make them drop you. Are you getting it? Yes, yes, yes. So, so the goal is to be able to create yourself and reinvent yourself that your edge is not in your offering oh. your edge is in your experience sometimes mm -hmm. some people will come out with the bid to crash the market they'll give more offer they'll okay. give more items but you see someone will say even if even though they gave more i still yes. stick with this do you yes. understand because you yes. know you need to understand there are different types of buyers right mm -hmm. they are, yes they are, yes yes they are conservative buyers yes yes they are adventurous buyers you can't stop from people from hopping around mm -hmm. um, Hmm. You can't stop it. So you hmm. kill yourself. If you say oh, someone came for your program and you saw him in another program, someone told you you're the best coach in town. Just as you're smiling about it, saying that you're the best coach in town, he's no. telling that, oh, I found the best coach in Nigeria. Ah, yeah. So you they go out, the best coach in town. Now, no. someone says, oh, someone says, ah, you are my father. And that person says, oh, this is my grandfather. Father. You, say, <laughs> you will kill yourself. This is my God. <laughs> <laughs> you will keep yourself if you start thinking of those kind of things. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm. So um, one of the things I would advise people to do is to ensure that one of the things they need to do to protect themselves from, from competition is to also ensure that they themselves, they, they themselves, they can predict the market. market. You see, let me tell you something. Market predictive behavior sometimes 
might not look like it's working in the short term, short -term. but it will always work in the long term. long term. So I would not say the name of a company or the product, but I will tell you, I'm sure you will get the answer now. Just pay attention. In 1991, Jude, okay. there was a particular company. I'm not saying the name of Mm -hmm. In 1991, there was a particular company that started a product. Mm. They called that product Two Minutes Something. Mm. But then because the market response was not good in six months, it mm. went down. Another company took over in October in that 1991. Mm. Are you listening to me? Yes, yes, yes. And by the time, by the time, listen, oh, by the time it was 1996, 95, 96, that mm. company had become the, the how do you call it now that company had become the uh what do you what would you call it now that company had become, exactly now Name the brand. children that love that company oh. and that brand at that time mm. have now become adults a child adults. of 1991 yes. is now how old now do you understand mm. so yes, 30 yes. years 31 years One down the line, line the person is now having that as his core product of choice now it takes for, for, it, for their children it, now and for their exactly so it's now becoming <laughs> trans transgenerational generation while Donald was fighting the economy of the now they had mm. turned it into an economy of the future future it's almost difficult to mention that product without mentioning their name name <laughs> i know the product. you understand <laughs> yes yes yes, so yes yes sometimes yes. one of the best tools to outdo or prevent yourself from being outdo in mm. competition is by doing what you call predictive profiling of the market. market. Where is the future? Where is, and that's why yes, even, even yeah, churches yeah. do it. Yes, even yes. churches do it. Yes, churches yes. that gravitate towards the youth, right? Mm, yes, they yes. They yes. tend to stand the test of existence yes. in the now. Because yes. the people that made up the numbers have now become old, Oh, and a lot of people are not willing to even take on their succession. succession. So even if they are willing to suck, to hand over, they're not mm. going to hand over to sustainable hands. Why? Hand, because yes. the market has moved. moved and you on. see, when you are a goalkeeper and you are guarding the wrong posts, <laughs> think about I like, it. I like that, I like that analogy. <laughs> goalkeeper guarding the wrong post. So thank you so much. Who is online? Uh, I can I can date Itunu, thank you for joining. Oliver Olisa, thank you for joining. Jacob Schools, thank you for joining this webinar. So uh, I I'll, I'll, I'll like those of you who are interested in rebranding or remodeling your business, you know who to contact, you know who to work with, and you know who to, uh, to focus on. Because at this point in time, your, if your business is not sustainable it's not uh, making heads with means it has a loophole and that calls for thorough remodeling so you have to remodel your business at this point in time so thank you mr rotimi for joining for, for for being a guest and being a thorough uh, guest for that matter for bringing everything to light and making it possible for business to see that they need to remodel and they see that they are not just running their business just based on business plan, but there's a model that works with each and every business, and it also has its method. So thank you, Mr. Rotimi, for, for being on this webinar. I remain your host, Shedu Jude. Uh, if you have any questions, so please ask before we call it a day. Yes. If you have any question, please ask before we call it a day. And if no question... <laughs> and if no question then have a wonderful evening we have had two hours of this so you can re-watch the video and see how it works with your business everything being everything shared today is very thorough and is very helpful for any business so that's why we made it a bit longer than necessary every business that will watch this webinar will actually have a taste of increase and we know what to do next. So have a wonderful day. I remain your host, Ashedu Jude. Remain blessed.